Good afternoon, I'm Robert Hofmeyer. Currently I am camping in South Luangwa with my brother-in-law Andy who's operating the camera. Uh, we're busy filming wildlife in the National Park but while we are here we are also going to unbox and install and test the new EcoFlow alternator charger. I've lugged this uh, EcoFlow alternator charger box all the way from uh, the Western Cape where we live to Zambia. So first we're going to do an unboxing, then we're going to discuss the difference between a traditional dual battery system and using an EcoFlow power station with the new alternator charger. Once we have installed the um, alternator charger in the vehicle, we, I'm going to disconnect my dual battery system and then we're going to run exclusively off the EcoFlow products for a while and see if there are any issues and see how they compare with my traditional dual battery system. All right, let's start with the obligatory unboxing sequence. Andy, come in real close here because I'm going to pull one of these, um, I don't know what you call these, like cardboard zippers. Oh man. Oh man, not satisfaction. Oh, no satisfaction for me. Oh, what a disaster of an unboxing. Okay, okay. That's fine, that's fine. There we go. Let's open this box up. It's quite a heavy box. Pull out the first box from inside. Very nicely packaged. There we go. Oh, there's a thing we need to cut. There, cut the seal. And this here is the that's a quick start guide. This here is the alternator charger itself. It's a solid metal, really well constructed unit and it's, it's pretty heavy. Let's put that aside for now. In the next box we get a cable. Here's the heavy duty cable. This uh, one end connects to your vehicle starter battery and the other end plugs in to the alternator charger. Then you get another cable, this one here, that runs from the alternator charger to your EcoFlow power station. Lastly, I believe you are meant to get, aha, a small box. Let's see what's in here. With a mounting plate and some screws. There we go. And some screws so you can mount the alternator charger nice and neat vertically somewhere in your vehicle. And that thus concludes the unboxing. All right, so this collection of objects represents a traditional dual battery system, such as the one installed in my vehicle, Barry. Uh, this toilet roll is the alternator. This is the starter battery. It sits under the bonnet of the vehicle. This is a DC-DC charger, could also be a solenoid. Here's the secondary battery. Uh, then over here we have, some vehicles have a solar panel on the roof and a solar charger such as an MPPT charger, also charging the secondary battery. I've used this light bulb to represent the DC loads. These could be anything from a fridge to camp lights to a compressor. And then most people nowadays also have a, an inverter running off the secondary battery and this can power things like coffee machines. The way this works is when you turn on the vehicle, the alternator starts putting out power. The DC-DC charger senses the raised voltage and starts charging the secondary battery. Then when you turn off the vehicle, the DC-DC charger turns off as well so that you don't pull power from your starter battery when the vehicle is off. That way all your accessories are now running off your secondary battery and even if they run that secondary battery totally flat, you can still start the vehicle in the morning from your primary battery. An EcoFlow power station can replace your secondary battery as well as your inverter and your MPPT charger. 
let's put this over here like that and your dc dc charger can be replaced by the new ecoflow alternator charger there so now when the vehicle turns on the alternator starts putting out power the ecoflow alternator charger senses the raised voltage and starts powering your ecoflow unit then when the vehicle turns off the alternator charger will sense that as well and stop drawing power from the starter battery same story as a dc dc charger it protects your starter battery from being drained uh, so you can always start your car in the morning so the EcoFlow alternator charger will charge up your Eco, EcoFlow Delta power station. Uh, you can also connect a solar input directly into the power station. It's got a built-in MPPT charger and you can power your AC loads from the power station. It's got, I think, a 2,400 watt inverter, something like that. It, plenty enough to power a kettle or Andy's hairdryer. So the question is, how do we power all our 12 volt loads? In my vehicle, I've got about 10 different USB chargers. I've got uh, power running directly to my camera while I'm filming. I've got a compressor in the back. I've got lights up on the roof rack. The EcoFlow unit just does not have the capacity to power all of these 12 volt loads. So you can power your fridge for example, from this 12 volt socket here, but I think it's actually preferable to power everything from your starter battery, because then if you wanna use your EcoFlow unit in your tent or even in your house at home, all your accessories will continue to function in your vehicle. You'll just have to be careful not to run your starter battery flat. When you do have your EcoFlow power station in the vehicle, you can activate something called reverse charging. The reverse charging function of the EcoFlow uh, alternator charger will allow you to pull power from your EcoFlow um, power station and power all your 12 volt accessories even though they are attached to your starter battery. That'll work very nicely but there is some risk that you can run your EcoFlow unit totally flat and then run your starter battery flat and now you can't start your car. But thankfully the EcoFlow app does have a setting where you can say reserve about 20% of the power of your EcoFlow battery so that you always have a bit of power in reserve to recharge your starter battery and get the vehicle going. But a better solution is a battery protector. That's just a small unit that goes between your starter battery and your 12 volt accessories. And that will cut off, turn off your 12 volt accessories at a preset voltage and prevent your starter battery from going completely flat. Okay, the next step is to pull this wire from the starter battery to the rear of the vehicle, uh, install the entire system and then test it for a few days and see how it compares to a traditional dual battery system. I'm not going to do a full installation video because there are plenty of those on YouTube and because I've just done a quick temporary installation here just to test out the system. I will show you the basics though. It's a very easy installation. You attach the negative line to the negative on your battery, the positive to the fuse, and then this short fuse cable to the positive on your battery. Then you just have to find a way to run this fat armored cable to the wherever you're gonna have your EcoFlow unit. In my case, I sent it through the firewall down in there, and then, it comes through over here by the passenger feet and I've just threaded it back there and around to behind the driver's seat and here is the alternator charger I've just put it on the floor here and as you can see it is already a little bit a little bit dusty this place is so dusty ah okay then from the alternator charger there's an, the second cable just plugs in the rear of the alternator charger. You can't get that bit wrong. There are little icons on to show which uh, port to connect it to. That cable then runs around and plugs into the port on the side of your EcoFlow unit. I have also connected the solar input for when we are sitting for long periods and not driving. So at least we have some power coming in and this connection runs to a solar panel that is pretty filthy as well it's a 100 watt solar panel up on the roof then i just rerouted all my 12 volt accessories using a splitter here to make sure that 
everything is running off the starter battery and I disconnected my secondary battery which is in the rear of the vehicle. So now all the 12 volt loads, including the fridge, the camera, the Starlink, all our chargers are connected directly to the starter battery and being powered from the EcoFlow unit when reverse charging is activated. EcoFlow did give me the alternator charger for this test free of charge, but I'm not obligated to say anything nice about it and they don't get to watch this video before I upload it. I just want to show you all the 12 volt things we have to run in the vehicle. At the back there is a fridge. Over here is my rather power hungry camera. Up top here we have more 12 volt ports, a cigarette socket, multiple USBs. These power all sorts of things, my zoom recorder, a GPS unit and we charge torches up here. Down here we have even more USBs for phones and GoPros and things. And on the roof I've got a Starlink that turns on and off over there. So you can see why the 12 volt outputs on the Delta 2 Max are not sufficient for my purposes, which is why I wired all my 12 volt accessories to the starter battery and use the reverse charging method. Of course, if you do just have, say, a fridge and some cell phones to charge in your vehicle, then there's no reason not to just plug them directly into your EcoFlow power station, and that makes it even simpler. With this setup you do have to remember to turn on reverse charging in the evening so you don't drain your starter battery overnight and in the morning before you start driving you turn it back to regular charging. This is not ideal because it's possible to forget to do that but I have chatted to EcoFlow and they say they will look into adding an auto option in the app which will then make it so that the alternator charger charges the EcoFlow unit from the alternator when the vehicle is running and then automatically flips to reverse charging when you stop. Hopefully that will come in a future firmware update. Good morning. We are sitting here with a beautiful male leopard. Um, it's about 10 meters away uh, having a rest over there. Uh, we're just waiting for him to do something interesting. So I thought I'd give you a quick update on the alternator charger installation. It's all installed, we've been running it for a couple of days and it's all going very well. Uh, just thought I'd give you an example here. Um, we were using the reverse charging method overnight last night. We've drawn down the battery in the, uh, in the power station down to about 40% and currently with the Starlink on camera running we're pulling 200 watts even though these things are connected to the starter battery, the power is being pulled from the Delta II unit. But when we start to drive, what we do is we flip it from reverse charge to charge, and then the alternator will start to top up the Delta II. We left the Leopards and we've been driving around for about an hour now and our EcoFlow Delta 2 Max is already at close to 60%. I'm charging it at 500 watts. That's less than the 800 watts that the alternator charger is capable of. But I figure since we're driving really slowly, it's not that much airflow over the alternator. May as well throttle it back a bit, play it a bit safe. And we're going to be driving so much today, we will easily fill up the power station by this evening. Okay, it's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. We've been, we're now sitting with a pride of, I think about 17 lions on a kill. We probably drove for about two and a half hours this morning and our EcoFlow power station is up to nearly 90%. We've stopped for a little break next to this beautiful lagoon. Our EcoFlow Delta 2 Max is at 94%, so now we can make a cup of coffee. What I've done is I've done a rather fancy installation of this Nespresso machine right here. So all we've got to do is we pop into the Delta 2 Max app and we turn on the AC power. This thing has uh, 2,400 watts, so it can run a little coffee machine, no problem. Then, how does this machine work? We open up there, insert the pod, like so. Oh, is that right? Yes, close it like that. And then we press a button. 
wait for it to heat. Let's see how much power it is drawing. Uh, Delta 2 max. EcoFlow's app, by the way, is really, really good. It's pulling 533 watts. Normally, uh, coffee machines are closer to 1,000 or a bit over. This one is meant to be 1,100, but I have previously spent way too much time modifying it to make it a low-draw coffee machine to try and run it off a, an old inverter that I had, and it didn't really work. So it is pulling less power than your normal coffee machine. What I did, for those of you who are interested, is I opened this thing up and I added a half-wave rectifier to the positive wire that goes to the element. And what that does is it cuts out half of your sine wave and reduces the power consumption of the element by 50%. But that still wasn't enough um, for it to work on my old inverter. And with this inverter, 2400 watts, I could remove that rectifier, uh, double the speed of this thing and it'll, it'll handle it no problem. Okay, I think it's heated. Now I press that button. You want a coffee, Andrew? That's a belief. Oh, and look at that. Lovely little coffee. I'm going to have the first one though. All right, I'll give you the second one. It actually is good. I think so. Oh, we've been using for coffee, we've been using our little out in nano espresso machine, which is fantastic. Fantastic thing. We love it. But I do think this is slightly better. Hmm. All right, we've made two coffees, still on 94%. So it's just only heating. The nice thing about these things is they only heat a very small amount of water. So they pull a lot of power, but it's for a short amount of time. All right, we have arrived back at camp. Uh, our Delta 2 Max is fully charged. So now what we do is we open up the EcoFlow app. And as you can see, the Delta 2 Max is still at 100%. And it's not currently being charged because the vehicle is off. So we're going to flip to reverse charging and confirm. So what's going to happen now, we've been uh, back in camp for an hour or so, so the starter battery has been drawn down a little bit. So as you can see, it's pulling uh, 500 watts, 520 watts from the um, Delta II Max. That's going to recharge the starter battery and then continue to power our loads, the Starlink and the refrigerator through the night. So the EcoFlow app says it's putting out 14 volts, but when we measure the voltage here at the starter battery, we get 13.89 volts, 13.9 volts. This is a, a good voltage to charge your um, starter battery at. It's not, it's not going to damage your starter battery even if you leave it uh, charging for an extended period. <sighs> All right, we have uh, stopped for a little coffee break under these beautiful uh, leadwood trees. Uh, we were busy filming a leopard. She's over that way about maybe 200 meters away but she's lying down under a bush and not doing much at the moment it's getting quite warm so i thought i'd take this time to give you a quick conclusion let you know what i think about the ecoflow alternator charger since we've been using it for a good week here in south luangwa the alternator charger is the missing link that makes ecoflow power stations a viable alternative to dual battery systems for overlanding installation is really simple but if you set it up like i have with all your dc loads off the starter battery then you do need to remember to change modes from charging to reverse charging when you go for a drive and when you come back in the evening hopefully ecoflow will add an auto mode in a future firmware update Power stations typically have high wattage pure sine wave inverters and excellent charging from solar or AC sources. Their weak points have always been slow DC charging and lack of high amp DC outputs. The alternator charger solves the slow DC charging issue and the reverse charging mode provides a method to power all the high draw DC loads in my vehicle. I hope you have found this video informative. We'll see you in the next one.